Hello, dear friends and colleagues. My name is Alexander Budovsky. I am a dentist, PhD, and I have been working as a prosthetist for more than 27 years. Now I have a private practice in Dubai. Today we will discuss with you an interesting topic, veneers diagnostics for planning. Despite the fact that I don't have much time, you will receive a lot of very important and interesting information that you can immediately apply and improve your practice, make the successful and predictable result of your prosthetics, so that multiply the beauty and health of your patients. Okay, we will start with the fashion analysis. Since it is impossible to consider teeth, veneers and our work in isolation from the patient's face. One of the most important landmarks is the interpupillary line. The frontal occlusal plane should be parallel to this line. Commensural line, a line from the corners of mouth. Frontal occlusal plane. Normally, as I said above, it is a parallel to the interpupillary line. If it is titled or displaced, it is, can significantly harm aesthetics and also be a symptom of TMG dysfunction, MLD patient, mandibular lateral dislocation. TMD is a separate large and very important topic, since the doctor's task is not only to make beautiful teeth, but also to treat the patient. Lips. Lips are an extremely important aspect, especially for women. A lot of cosmetologists increase the size and volume of their lips, which greatly affects the assessment of facial parameters. Also, also, some patients believe that it is possible to make protruding lips or smooth or wrinkles due to teeth. It is very important that you have everything recorded before starting treatment. Otherwise, if the patient did not like something, you may be accused that the facial changes with you to tooth changes. The middle line of the face is also a very important feature. Our other parameters is estimated rel uh, relative to it, the middle line of the upper jaw. If they don't know much or the middle line of the upper jaw is tightly, then this greatly harms the aesthetics of the smile. Middle line for upper jaw, I told about this. Middle line of the low jaw is probably not so most important parameter from aesthetics point of view. However, it gives us something to think about, since the reasons may be different and they are all symptoms of pathology. Either this is a dental alveolar dis displacement, for example, the last of teeth and the old teeth uh, move on this side, or there may be a skeletal asymmetry. asymmetry sorry. The body of, or ramus of the mandibula is shorter or longer on, the, on one side than other side. Also, it can be symptom of TMD, disc prolapse, variation of TMG function. Center of chin and gonial, gonial angle. Gonial angle determines the type of face or rather type of height. If the gonial angle is large, the face is longer. If closer to the right angle, uh, to the right angle, closer to the right angle, uh, then square the shape of uh, shape of head is a square. The shape of uh, teeth is also selected dependent of shape of head. Also, uh, it is very important to evaluate the patient's profile. This gives us a lot of information and uh, about the height of the bite and about the position of the low jaw. If you take the several points, then you can divide the profile into thirds, upper, middle and low. 
they are approximately equality balanced. The law sought from the subnasium from the subnasium point to the menton is divided through the uh, stomion, point stomion, so that the distance from the subnasium to the stomion is one shot from the lower part of the face. And the, from the stomion the, to the menton is two thirds. In addition, the distance between glabella and menton is divided and half by the point subnasium. A couple more aesthetic lines in your piggy bank uh, of knowledge. E plane, aesthetic line of rickets. This is a tip of nose and chain. And Burston line connects the subnasal point to the pogonion point. And you can uh, imagine the different position of leap uh, between these lines. And the second part, this is a component of balanced smile. From the general functional science, let's move on into smile. Here are eight components of balanced smile that you should take into account in your work. At first, lip line, smile arc, upper lip, curvature, lateral negative space, smile symmetry, symmetry frontal occlusal plane, dental components, and gingival components. Uh, next, we will analyze their clinical and practical significance. Buccal corridors. If they are large, then the upper jaw seems narrow. Look at now uh, at how it uh, catches the eye in the second patient. patient. Again, the background of large and wide head. If the corridors are heavy, closed, it seems that there are a lot of teeth in the mouth and Cheshire cat. Arch of smile. Uh, what determines the position of the cutting edge of the upper uh, incisors? Can you answer? Answer and then we'll check with the correct answer. One, two, three. You reply. Who answered that the position of the upper incisors is determined by the low lip answered correct, correctly. For women, the shape of the arch should be more pronounced. This creates a beautiful and very feminine dentition. For men, flatter, if it gives masculinity. The harmony between pink and white aesthetics is extremely, extremely important. Very often, considering of teeth, technician aspect of preparation or impressions, etc., etc., they forget about the parameters of condition of the gum and gingival margin. On average, uh, the tip of the pa papilla should be located approximately the same level. And the distance from the zenith to the top of the gingival papilla is 4 uh, until 5 millimeters. Uh, when looking at smile, the size of teeth have the different meanings due to perspective. Uh, based on this, uh, we get that we get that the width of the central incisor is equal to the sum of the dimensions of the lateral incisor and half of the canine. However, imagine how uh, it will all look if we have the gingival margin at different levels. Look at the kind of smile before prosthetics. Also, the width of the teeth may be close to normal. So, the zenith of the lateral incisor should be lower than the central and canine. The zenith of the canine and the central one is at the same level, or the canine is slightly higher. Also, the cutting edge uh, of the lateral incisors is somewhat shorter. shorter. Gingival aesthetics. Gingival shape, the maxillary lateral symmetrical half oval or half circle shape, 
maxillal, centrals, and canines uh, elliptical. Gingival, they need the most, uh, this is the most apical point, the gingival tissue. Uh, maxillary uh, centrals and canines uh, distal of the longitudinal axis. Maxillary laterals and the mandibular incisors coincidence with the longitudinal axis. axis sorry. Gingival aesthetic lines. This is a parameter uh, very interesting and uh, it has the classes and in the normal uh, angle is between 45 degree and uh, 90 degree. A separate topic for discussion is the pink aesthetics around implants. Now surgeons have learned how to place implants securely, but very few people, very few surgeons are friends with the pink aesthetics. Uh, the assessment is carried out according to several indices. I use PES. Uh, VES most often is it is very important to objectively assess and describe the clinical situation. Unfortunately, we don't have much time to deal with these indexes. Therefore, you have a special task. Uh, task: take a picture of the slide, find articles on this topic on the internet, and make a small report for your colleagues. How the harmony of the white and pink aesthetics works in real practice is better understood by clinical example. I was approached by a, uh, I was approached by a young and very beautiful woman uh, who wanted to improve her smile. You can see that there is a gingival type of smile here. We apply the knowledge already gained in this lecture to evaluate the facial features and parameters on, of balanced or unbalanced smile. I have developed uh, a checklist on aesthetics, especially for you. Write to me and uh, we will send it to you in the form of an article in PDF. Also. Also, there are gaps, be, uh, also in this case, uh, you can see gaps between the teeth and also uh, seen wearing off, reduction of bite, height of bruxism and so on. We will discuss with you only smile, but this is the only part of a big and large case of total rehabilitation. How to cope, how to manage with the gingival smile? We have uh, several options. At, at first, orthodontic intrusion, orthognatic surgery, the second, osteotomy, osteotomy of the upper jaw of, uh, for lifting and rotation, surgical elongation of the crown part of the frontal teeth, botox in the fascial muscles and uh, lift the upper lip, and combination of these methods. Everything needs to be calculated and discussed with the patient uh, because this affects the, uh, affects the duration of treatment, it's the price and the volume inter of intervention. In the calculation, it is also important to take into account that the degree of visualization of the upper teeth during life is not always the same. According to the researchers' data, uh, the exposure of upper incisors decreases significantly by the age of 40-45. Therefore, it is not right to completely, completely remove the gingival smile. Science you, work, science, you work should give joy and health to people for decades. Yes. This is one of the most common questions and fears of the patient. And doctors to be too, by the way. How long serves the veneers? Because uh, the doctor grinned a tooth and the veneers needs to be changed in the year or two. Take a photo of this slide and hang in 
in the clinic. Show it your patients. The survival rate of veneers is very high if everything is done correctly. They have been serving flawlessly for decades. And you can see researchers uh, the period 50 years, 20 years, and uh, with the high right sur sur survival rate until 100%, 96 percent. Okay, let's continue to consider our clinical case. Here you can see the option of uh, transmitting information to the surgeon using a splint for the exact formation of the new position of gingival zenix. Now, all this is done is a digital protocol and in addition of the mouth, mouth splint for transfer of this level of uh, the needs, you will immediately receive a new set of temporary crowns with the desired gum level. A very important aspect that needs to be discussed with the patient and taken into account when planning the timing of the manufacture of permanent veneers. If you have limited yourself to gingiva tamia, then you will need to wait about four or five weeks before the uh, constant prosthetics. If there was surgery with separation of the flap, then you will have to wait two times longer, about 8 to 12 weeks. And in the case of a correction of the level of the bone, alveol bones, it will be possible to switch to permanent works only after six months. This is a final result of prosthetics. You know that this girl not only got a beautiful smile, but also changed internally, became more confident. Within a year, she went from being an ordinary manager to a head manager. And now she has been running her own serious business for several years. Once again, this is the only part of a lot of work with full rehabilitation and total prosthetics of the patient. How to increase the bite? What is the reaction of the muscle? How to change the profile and improve not only appearance of the patient, but also to optimize occlusion, the work of the TMG and, mass and much more. I have a separate course on total prosthetics where we will discuss a lot of nuance and life hacks of this complex box. Aesthetic planning of veneers rules for choosing the color, shape, and size of teeth. At first, from the point of view of planning, one of the main role, roles for us is played by the position of the tooth. Its size and inclination, that is a certain geometry of teeth, which will be encrypted and general structure of the smile as part of the overall picture of the face. Why I be moving with you in this lecture from the analysis of, of common facial features to a balanced smile and are already moving into the details of dental analysis. Since the lecture is not only a set of useful information and new knowledge, but also itself is a demonstration of the methodology in working with the aesthetics of patient. To determine the length of the incisors and their inclination, we can use phonetic uh, tests. Uh, the test the sound F, F allows, allows you to determine the position of the cutting edge of the upper incisor relative to the boundary between the wet and dry red border of the low lip. A test with the sound S, S. you can ask the patient Mississippi, Mississippi allows you to determine the speech distance. If it is 
unnecessarily closed by the slope or length of the incisors, the patient will begin to whistle or click. The test with sound M, 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 gives us the opportunity to see the degree of visualization of the incisor of the upper jaw at rest. By the way, samples with the sound of S and uh, M help us in determining the height of the bite. Also, we can uh, should be appeal to cephalometric analysis. Very often patients want to increase the size of the front teeth. You know that the dominant of the central incisors creates a feeling of your younger smile. However, this is uh, not always possible. Uh, here is a part of a clinical example. And even before we promised to do everything as the patient wants, we can already understand uh, the prospects of such action beforehand. Please note, the, um, note that the lip length is very large. And no matter how we increase the length of tooth, we will not get the desired result, but only on the contrary will worsen the aesthetics. To determine the correct proportion of the tooth, you can uh, use aesthetics indexes. The ideal length uh, corresponds to certain widths of the tooth. Uh, to determine the correct proportions of the tooth, you can uh, use aesthetic indexes. Uh, here is uh, an example of the calculation. There is, uh, by the way, uh, this is a teeth of orthodontists for uh, a width uh, of uh, 8.5 uh, millimeters, a uh, length of 11 millimeters will correspond. That is even with pronounced wearing of teeth or their complete absence, it is uh, possible to calculate the size of uh, future restoration. Also, you can use the uh, proportion of the widths uh, to the length of the central incisors correlates 4 to 5. On average, the width is 75 uh, 80% of the length of the incisors. In this clinical example, we were just planning to surgical lengthening uh, the crown part of the incisors and close the gaps between the teeth with veneers. In such cases, it's very important to calculate everything so as not to get excessively large teeth as a horse. Uh, choosing uh, the shape and size of the front teeth. The choice uh, of the shape is also a very important aspect. More rounded, smooth shapes gives more femininity. We have already said in this section, balanced smile, that the formation of a smile arc gives us the same tool. That is, to draw the image of a smile, we must use all the levels of our instruments. More square, sharp uh, sh uh, uh, form as a for men. If you want to add aggression, we make more pronounced canines. The dominant incisors, mi micro relief, and the brighter color rejuvenate the smile. Lack of transparency, color bleach, monochrome, lack of macro relief make a smile artificial, unnatural airline. Uh, choosing our color uh, this is a complicated procedure. You can see uh, different clinical cases. Yeah, you like it? And as a rule, the fewer, fewer teeth we need to fit into the patient's smile. The more difficult this task is, the most difficult thing is to make a single veneer on the central incisor and achieve an absolute match with the nigh-boring one. I will try to give you some working tips, but it's very important to understand here. 
uh, if you only need white, then you don't have to choose much. There is examples. This is a patient from other dentists, clinics and different countries. All got complications after total prosthetics. We need to redo uh, everything again, but also to treat TMG, pain and muscle spine. Also, you see that they have no special difference. Bleach is very rare. And as a side, we uh, have to use style of nature. Pay attention to have the patient choose the color. Uh, she wants she, uh, the whitest, whitest, whitest teeth. And even natural B eyes doesn't seem white enough to her. Therefore, we have a choice of types of four types, four types of bleach. And you can see the men choose very white teeth. But uh, the color of the tooth is heterogene uh, heterogeneous. And to create is natural, both the dental and technician and the doctor must work hard. Therefore, such work should be much more expensive. You have the opportunity to explain why your works is more expensive than a veneer in a neighbory clinic. And also you can make veneers for the promotion at a big with a big discount, explaining that the tooth will not be of poor quality uh, from cheap materials, not, 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 but simple, without creating natural uh, naturalness. That is there is a room for maneuver. Uh, you can see the change of the smile. And if the, you can rule, you can lead uh, your payment of patient. Consider the color of the stamp. Since if the veneer is the thin, the color of the final restoration can be seriously different, especially in compression, uh, comparison with neighboring teeth. This can be corrected at the fixation stage by selecting the fixing cement of the desired brightness and color. But as a general rule, it is a necessary, uh, necessary to take into account the color of the stamp when, dis, uh, when preparing. A step of one tone, you know, for example, from A3 uh, to A2 requires requires additional preparation by uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 millimeter deeper. And uh, it is not always possible to solve the problem of artificial gums periodontologically. Therefore, the color of the gum is also photographed and selected to create a, a restoration. A few tips when choosing a color. At first, colors determined before preparation of teeth. Second, the color of stamp is determined. Three, to determine the lightness of the teeth, it is advisable to take a black and white photo. Lightning. Artificial color temperature 5000 kelvins. Natural in the daytime, not so sunny. Selection ideally with the technician. This is very important, or you make the, a special photo and send the technician a photo with the chart. At first glance, for choice of uh, for choose of color because I photograph after seven, seven and ten seconds. Well, uh, let's summarize the uh, re result of our work with you and make a checklist uh, that will not allow you to make mistakes when working with veneers and aesthetics of the patient. You will just need to follow uh, it and uh, fill out the appropriate list. If you write to me, my assistants will send you an extended checklist in the forum in the form uh, of the article in PDF. Smile type, uh, we have to consider smile, smile type, the level of smile line, 
position of the midline of the face, lower and upper jaw, the position of the frontal occlusal plane is the edge, the location and the inclination of the cutting of edges of the frontal teeth relative to each other and to the interpupillary line, overjet overbite, angulation and the inclination of teeth their they are symmetric, teeth size, shape of teeth, locational and symmetry of gingival zenits, presence of diast diastem and crowding, torta anomalia, aplasia, dysplasia of individual, uh, individual teeth, fluorosis, etc. Color, hue, saturation, lightness and discolorite, inflammatory or neoplastic process in the gum area, and reconstruction, uh, reconstruction crown or implants or other fillings and so on. Thank you so much for your attention. If you have any questions you want to study with me, get useful video and materials in the form of articles on various sections of dentistry, implantation and aesthetics for free, then subscribe to my Instagram page and scan the QR code. I wish you all health, goodness and happiness. Thank you so much.